Good evening and Good welcome evening. to another episode of Renaissance Broads. And by another episode, I mean the second one. Episode two. Welcome mm-hmm. back, Carolyn. I'm so glad that we survived our first um, adventure together. So fun. It was treacherous. <laughs> Hardly. I wasn't sure if we were going to make it out alive, but but we did it. Mm-hmm. We did it. Cheers to that. Cheers. So, um... We got a little salty on our last adventure. This adventure, which I don't know about you, but in um, the Naughty Donkey Kitchen, it was, in fact, a whole adventure. We got a little sweet Uh this time around. So we wanted to um, make some fun, maybe kind of easy but maybe not so easy sweet treats for our friends and family and loved ones uh for the holiday season and that's what we have on this table today are Indeed. the treats of our labor uh-huh. um this was this was an adventure like you went all out with kind of like the food science piece. Yeah, you know what? Well, these were all piece. What I made is these are all things that um, I've been a little scared, I guess, to try. You Understandably. Know? So I am a cook and I'm a baker and I cook all the time. Bake all the time. Cookies, cakes, regular food. You know, I'm down. I've made my own pasta. I've made bagels. I've done all the things i know how to you know cook a rack of lamb i know how to make prime rib i know how to cook a decent steak got it but when you start boiling sugar and there's a thermometer and there's like exact temperature readings and gauges and stuff i was always a little bit nervous about that so i decided to challenge myself and i made four different recipes that required Boiling sugar. Boiling sugar. Essentially, yes. Like hard and fast boiling sugar. One of them was a complete disaster. That's okay. And and the other three, I, I, I think, I guess turned out okay. I mean, they look yeah. great yeah. from over here. We'll mm-hmm. we'll talk about. We're going to go through individual stuff, right? Absolutely. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about this um, mm-hmm. experiment gone yeah, wrong I mean, over this here is all in the Ziploc bag. You know, this is all about yeah. us trying new things. That's why we tried and it first. Yeah, so, so. We're, we're trying some stuff. And I know all of these recipes, too, I gave to Michael, our producer. So he is going to be, oh, if, if anybody sad. is like, hey, you know, I think maybe that doesn't sound as scary as, as it, it, you know, maybe it sounded to me. And I could also make hard candy or gummies or caramels or anything and then we know you can see that on yep. our youtube channel that's the whole point mm-hmm. we're gonna try it so you don't have to <laughs> and you make the determination if it's worth your time energy and effort exactly um i would say over on my end um i did go a little safe because um i was scared of the boiling sugar and i talked to you on the phone you're like i got a candy thermometer and i'm like oh fuck that (laughs) absolutely not you are for our listeners and viewers who are the go-getters you want to do the the difficult stuff and you're Uh gonna nail it i'm like "Mm," you know i know my way around a kitchen i pride myself in my culinary abilities as well but there are just some things I'm not willing to try. I, I get it. And boiling mm-hmm. sugar is one of them. So I am for you, listeners and viewers out there, who are not about boiling the sugar. Sure. You, this is your jumping out of an airplane. Yes. <laughs> I get it. Fuck to the no. Yes. And you know what? The, actually, this one, the caramels especially, not hard. Okay. And you could even do it without watching a thermometer, just like by like the looks of it. Okay. And I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that. Well, which piece do you want to talk about first? These things you need to do. This is all very thermometer-y, science-y. Okay. Let's get the the scary stuff out of the way scary first. Because I feel okay. like our listeners are going to, like, they're listening for the scary stuff. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's bring that to... Well, want to just, like, bring the plate forward? Yeah. All right. We'll talk about So your... there are... Um, yummy nummies first. Yeah, so things with a candy thermometer and... Is that Okay. Because I don't know. Okay, cool. Um, things with a candy thermometer and yeast are the two things in cooking that I am afraid of. I am terrible with yeast. I cannot make a decent loaf of bread 
it comes out a little tough. So I'm I'm working on that. It's kind of like being in like Alcoholics Anonymous. Like it's a it's a multi step process every day. I'm moving a little bit forward to being kind of like the proper yeast baker. But I feel like after this, maybe, except for this little monstrosity over here, which we'll talk about in a second, I feel like maybe I've mastered the thermometer, except two candy thermometers died. In, oh, my God. In, in, in the process. <laughs> I broke. I broke two <laughs> candy thermometers. Okay, is there mercury in that you're giving <laughs> no, to like no, your no, no. friends what, and family and what loved ones? What happened is I ha- I found a candy thermometer when we moved into our house. Like it was like in the back of a cabinet. Like somebody had forgotten <laughs> about it. And I'm like, "Huh, look at that." You know, and I just kind of cleaned it off and stuck it in a drawer. Sure. And Are you sure it was a candy thermometer uh, yes, and it wasn't I'm, used for other things? I'm, oh, my God, Mike. Ew. Ew. <laughs> I'm going, like, Ew. the haunted candy thermometer. Just, no, just <laughs> it, just a glass thing. And that one um, I actually used to make two of these recipes. And then I put it in the sink and my 15-year-old was doing the dishes. Oh, and no. he just chucked a bunch of stuff in the sink and it was basically like it's like a metal piece with then like the thermometer part kind of like on the inside of it and then it's glass on the outside and then like a little metal ball at the end and he was doing the dishes and all of a sudden I hear mom and I'm like and he comes over and he's like holding up the two pieces and I'm like oh bud I'm like that's okay I'm like I didn't buy that I found it and I don't know how old it is it served. It did this purpose, but yeah. it did not break in the process of the of the cooking. The okay. second, the second one did. <laughs> <laughs> and that one, I got at Home Goods. Okay. And it was cheap, and it was metal on the outside, and um, I melted it. <gasps> yeah. So I'm like, huh. So oh I my think god. Lesson learned. The glass one did really, really well. It's just, you know, when you throw a bunch of silverware and plates on top of a glass thermometer, it's, you know, it, it's going to break in the sink. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it, it's not indestructible. But the metal one, I, I think I just bought a cheap candy thermometer. And it melted. And it, like, it kind of like, 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 kind of, Yeah. Okay, so it didn't like liquefy not into your Mm-mm. your food stuff. No, nor do I think mercury is used anymore in thermometers. That's... I don't I don't think that's a thing anymore. But I could be wrong. I mean, I could be 100% wrong. But honestly could not tell you. I talked about that on Instagram today where it's like, and how many candy thermometers did Carolyn go through? <laughs> that would be two because as of right now, I don't own a candy thermometer because um... I went through two of them to do this again, I am going to need to go out and purchase another candy thermometer. I think it's time that Apple <laughs> start developing the candy thermometer app. Totally. Or if, you just kind of like hold it next to the pot or something. That would be amazing. Right. Mm-hmm. Come on, Apple. Get on it. Totally. We're but not buying another candy thermometer around here. For, well, you know, it, they weren't, they're not that expensive, but just a little bit hard to find. Like I did have to go to several stores. Okay. Because my go-to store that I normally get like cooking kind of things sur la table like they're, they've been closing stores and they're not around I get that though yeah so I'm like man I don't want to like go all the way down to stupid carry and I for one have things. never ever ever stepped foot into a sur la table so oh, they're amazing. okay so this first one this is hard candy so as you can see it's hard so it's like a sucker and this one, I started out, this one I thought was going to be the hardest, turned out to be the easiest. Great. It's like one step. You put all the ingredients in the pot and you set it to boil. It has to boil at, it gets to 300. And it takes a really, really long time for sugar to get to 300 degrees. I must have looked like a crazy person. I was like hunched over my stove like my face right next to the thermometer like watching <laughs> that little dial like slowly go up to 300 and i'm like oh my god this is taking so long i mean it's like 10 minutes oh my god of like watching actual sugar boil 
I guess, you know what they say, a watched pot never boils. Indeed, yeah. A, a watched, watched candy thermometer does not watch, reach it, it does not, 300 it does not, degrees. No. So then I just, you know, followed the instructions. I mean, of course, like I'm like a lunatic, like back and forth with all of the instructions in a recipe. I watched several YouTube videos. I did a little tutorial on America's Test Kitchen just to make sure that like I had this. And you put, like, literally put all the ingredients in the pot. It's corn syrup. It's sugar. It's water. It gets to the boiling temperature. You add the flavoring and the food coloring, and you pour it into whatever receptacle. And then, like, less than a half an hour later, it's set. I'm like, oh. <laughs> well, that wasn't so bad. Don't you <laughs> so, love that? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that wasn't hard at all. The hardest one was probably the gummies. Okay. Let's talk about the gummies. So those... These are cranberry little little fruit gummies. A little squish, squish. Oh, squish. Right up here in the camera. Oh, oh, oh. oh, a little, little too close. Not too, <laughs> Is that too know? close? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm ready for my close up. Um, uh, I think that was like a perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, like right there. Yep. Um, this, it, or, it's two different pots. And you have okay. to time it. Like the sugar's got to be boiling, and you wait till that boils to a certain temperature, and then you like. Boil the gelatin, and and since my friend here is um, a vegetarian, vegan, I went out and bought kosher vegan gelatin. Thank you. So that you could eat it. Where did you find that, by the way, for the one other vegan listener? I found it at Publix. Nice. Yeah. It was like, I mean, there was like regular gelatin and then kosher gelatin. I'm like, oh, well, that's easy. <laughs> How convenient. <laughs> like, like, Thanks, Publix. Thanks, Publix. <laughs> you know? And then later I was buying other baking goods at Harris Teeter and I saw it at Harris Teeter too. Huh. Yeah. I'll kosher, be damned. Kosher gelatin. Now we're going like, to find it everywhere. Now you're going to see it's it It's just going to follow us. Totally. But that was like the cranberry juice and the gelatin had to be in one pot and that had to like simmer for a little bit and then you couldn't bring that temperature up until this the sugar and the water temperature hit like a certain temperature and then you combine them and you had to be like constantly stirring and then that had to come up to a certain temperature it was multi-stepped and multi-layered and you did all this on the full moon at, like so, venus and retrograde i guess yeah like and that three was, planets aligned so that it was a very similar process as to the disaster. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, like, give yourself a break. This isn't quite disastrous. It's, like, it's a hot mess. It could still be made. It in looks like a tumor. To, <laughs> like, you know what it looks like. <laughs> um, you know those like weight loss pill commercials, totally, and they show it you like looks, the fat. What five pounds of fat looks? Like. Yeah, yeah. Hold it up. <laughs> so it's supposed to be in like an orange. Here, let's just take it out of the bag. This is a good time. Um, it's supposed to be in like an orange jelly candy, and it yeah, it looks like be like, and I lost fifteen pounds. And this is what. Yeah, like I said, or like a kidney stone. Or God, don't ever pass a, that it's through a, your urethra. It's, it's a puma, you know. So it's just <laughs> it's this, not a tuma. Yeah, it's just this. Uh, no, it's, but it's it's pliable. Like, see, yes. I mean, it's kind of something can be done with this. I don't know what, but you can like. Okay, well, if you want to do something with this, you I know am what? leaving this here <laughs> because that is not coming home with me. Man, <laughs> you. It, you can wow. mold this and put mm -hmm. like a tea light under it and it can be like a very soft yeah so yeah i mean it harkens back to maybe it's a salt lamp <laughs> build a house on that you could like a good foundation. this is like i don't know <laughs> i'm crying <laughs> so, anyway, I guess if you, it's gonna it long it's enough, gonna it's crush gonna, the, the, yeah, not it's, the cranberry and then, bread and if you listen to it yeah there you go so it's like a solid salad thing so it's a lol squid mm -hmm. so this is same directions as these little jelly things but not gelatin it had fruit pectin in it okay so fruit pectin mm -hmm. is the enemy well here's here's what here was my mistake this recipe that i found i found it on like a legit website that i have used many many times it's called taste of home because I'm going to throw them under the bus. Oh, no. And um, found lots of things that I really like on Taste of Home. I didn't read the reviews. 
rookie mistake. Ooh. Right? I did not read the reviews. But there was definitely one review that just said WTF. <gasps> so I believe many other people <laughs> have made this <laughs> and then been like, what the fuck? Your gods are dead here. <laughs> like, There's no hope for you in like, this recipe. <laughs> you know, so I'm like, okay, so maybe it's not me. Maybe it's just a shit recipe. I'm, I'm hoping that that's the well, case. Well, obviously, clearly it's you know, not you. This because like, look this worked at out. This worked everything out. else. These worked out. I'm eating this. this. Yeah, and then the last one I made was caramels, which I have made before. But... My caramels have always been a little grainy because they crystallized. And I think I wasn't kind of like caramels. Ha- you have to follow the steps. It's very ordered. It's science. Mm-hmm. It's very much like do this and then wait till it does this and then do this and wait till it does this. And the recipe that I found was so great. It was like, and then put a lid on it and let the steam condense so that it gets all the crystals off the side and then use a pastry brush to brush the side of the pan and then I mean it was so detailed and I followed it to the letter and they came out smooth they're chewy they're a perfect consistency they're not grainy that's so exciting like great caramels Michael go ahead and um, bite into a caramel because there's dairy in that how about this um um, what's this thing on the top can I eat that you can it's just like from the like the sugar kind of foams up it's just kind of like a hmm. I was going to cut it off but it's just like a different consistency but I mean I love these my kids were going crazy for them I gotta tell you those um cranberry gummies mm-hmm. are like super delicious mm-hmm. I'm chewing um it tastes like candy it's got like the consistency of, of like, candy. Of like a gummy bear kind of situation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I did some digging and I found a picture of Carolyn in her kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Is that from Breaking Bad? It could be. It's probably. probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the texture reminds me of something not, maybe not it's been a long time since i've had a gummy bear because uh gummy bears have gelatin but Mm -hmm. probably that's it like it's dense um but not overly chewy it's not super sweet Mm -mm. because i mean it's only in all like you saw like i I made a ton of them it only has a cup of sugar wow no other sweetener we're like this is sugar and corn syrup and and then this one is (laughs) Brown sugar and butter and, uh, you know, I mean, there's... <laughs> butter. There's, it's butter. It's, butter. It's, it's butter and cream <laughs> and, like, all sorts of goodness. But, um, yeah, this is just cranberry mm. juice and a cup of sugar, a lot of gelatin. Okay. I had to use two boxes. Oh, wow. It was two ounces. Because with the, it, it, they said if you're using kosher, I actually had to use more gelatin. That makes sense. I guess you know. I don't know. Maybe the pork does things. I feel like the <laughs> the bones um, are what provides that. Um, I don't want to say elasticity. I don't know. But I th- I think that's what it is. And uh-huh. like all plant based um, alternatives, it's just not going to have quite the same. Um, texture or what properties as like an animal based product yeah, would for sure. so, so I had to use more of it yeah and it so it did kind of like gel a little faster and I adjusted the recipe just a little bit it was like okay I can't it seems to like start to like solidify a little bit faster okay since it's plant based well that's a good time uh-huh. so um the rock candy here uh-huh. Um, which looks like shards of glass. So, like, you uh-huh. could totally put that. Yeah, I know. That looks like beach glass. It's, like, super pretty. Like, I would definitely put it in, like, a vase and, like, show it off, but also, like, eat it and uh-huh. have my uh, friends and family be like, are you eating glass? And I'm like, yes, I hate my life. Um, so <laughs> that's a fun prank you can play on, you know, everyone you, vi- uh-huh. you invite over for the holidays. But it is – it's beautiful. Um, it's very aesthetically pleasing. Obviously delicious. It's sugar. 
Um, and also super easy to make. So yeah, I was shocked. Ten out of ten would mm-hmm. totally make this again. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, the gummy's a little bit harder, and maybe you want to play with the flavors. My boys didn't like it. Except mm. they said it wasn't sweet enough. And that sounds right. I thought they were good I, because I liked the subtle kind of cranberry flavor. And everybody loved the caramels. The caramels are delicious. Honestly, those mm-hmm. um, those cranberry gummies pair very nicely with this Cab Sav we're totally. sipping tonight. I, I mean, and I mean, you could probably just drop them in the wine. Because mm. I was even thinking, too, like this, like infuse them with alcohol. Yes. Like, you know, like make some gummies and like have them. And then, like, at the end, right before they're about to set, you could just, like, inject it Mm. with wine, with vodka, with tequila. My other thought, too, if you're Uh a psychopath who wants (laughs) your your red wine chilled, Uh you could totally freeze those and, like, make them, like, ice cubes so Uh your wine doesn't get watered down. I do watch people, like, drinking red wine. And I have seen people put, like, ice in their red wine. And I'm like, cool, watch out for that asshole. Like, who well, yeah, are I mean, you? Maybe sangria. There it is. Th- Thank that's, you. That That's the only, I think, the only acceptable time. Always bringing, like. <laughs> <laughs> A little clarity. To yeah. that. <laughs> Just, oh, you know, sangria is over ice, and that's with red wine. But it has other things in it. The fruit. You know what? Mm-hmm. I Now I can kind of see the super festive kind of sangria cocktail. Mm-hmm. These with yummy gummies. gummies in it. Yes. Like um, sugar rim with, like, the cranberries and the oranges, mm-hmm. all the yummy fruity things that go into sangria. Big fan. So we'll design some cocktails, and we'll post it on our Instagram. Fun story for these. you. Mm-hmm. I stumbled across a book, and it is essentially a um, cocktail recipe book, Mm -hmm. but the cocktails are um, recipes that women came up with. Fantastic. So I need to acquire said book. And isn't that life? Recipes that women came up with? Like... Yeah, well, seriously, who... (laughs) That's... Think of all of your favorite recipes. Weren't they created by women? Seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, on God. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking about these are women at home, and they're like, oh, my God, I'm out of my usual mixer, but I have to drink. Uh-huh. What am I going to do here? And so they you, come up with this amazing cocktail. So you drink a Scotch and Splenda? And- <laughs> and- I'll bet that's a thing, though. Okay. No, okay. And, you know, referencing <laughs> another podcast. Um, I was listening to the Office Ladies and their podcast, and they Michael Scott on the Office drinks Scotch and Splenda, so they tried it one time on their podcast. Oh my god! They said it was really good. Okay. So I was like, "Well, I'm gonna have to try that." So I did. I didn't have any Scotch, but I had bourbon. I mean, same, same, right? Right. Dark wit, dark, and I just I had a bourbon and Splenda. And it was pretty good. Okay, noted. It was pretty good. Duly noted. Mm-hmm. We will, we will try like, that. Like just over ice, <laughs> just a couple packets of Splenda. That's good. amazing. Really okay, good. I'm actually really like good. really excited about mm-hmm. that. And at Target, um, they have all kinds of crazy ice molds so like you can get that big fancy sphere oh totally like the big ball yes Uh or like the tiny tiny ice cubes like i don't know why that excited me so much Uh or and i'm just like i'm kind of obsessed with like this fear ice ball so got it as a gift low-key want to get one for me but then i was like i don't drink like bourbon on ice or anything like Uh that so i would just have these balls of ice sitting around why not drink a vodka soda with a big ball of ice you know what you're right what would be wrong with that not a fucking thing really you know thank you for that (laughs) always coming through for me (laughs) shedding the light bringing the clarity Mm -hmm. and then this well this last thing this is just cranberry bread because i like making cranberry bread and i brought you guys some cranberry bread thank you but that That wasn't anything like, you know. Treacherous. Tre- no, this is, I've been making for years. And and, she's and as I told you downstairs, I made four loaves 
less than a week ago, and mm. I, I brought the remaining loaf mm. to y'all because my children are locusts. Mm. Mm-hmm. But I want to hear about the balls. Can you can you tell me about your balls? I will or... absolutely tell you about okay. the balls. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me wash down that cranberry bread. <laughs> It's time for slide open one of that. Oh, sorry. Push. All right, that's good. There you go. All right, so let us rotate. Well, I do have two um, series of balls here. I guess we'll go with the chocolate balls first. Your sweaty balls? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, like, didn't even move. It didn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there <laughs> that's gonna make a great doorstop. <laughs> it it's a giant tumor. Or this is just going on the like garbage. a really f- lovely like bookend. Is that is that a good spot? I hate to see it go. Oh no, that's gonna move away. That All right, okay. so um, I am not the motivated, um, thrill seeking. <laughs> Um, <laughs> because I guess the candy thermometer is daredevil so in the kitchen <laughs> that Carolyn is here. Um, no shit. I woke up Sunday morning hungover and I was on Facebook and I saw a video and I'm like, well, that looks pretty fucking easy. And that's what I made. Um, so this, this one right here, one. please do mm-hmm. honestly really good i did take I love some the cold sugar thank you food lion mm. so cute so this is a box of a uh, brownie mix um prepared as instructed on the box um baked that let it cool crumbled it up threw like a maybe two tablespoons of icing in just for that binding factor rolled it up Melted it down, melted down some dark chocolate chips, tossed my balls in mm-hmm. this melted chocolate, threw some gold sprinkles on it, and honestly, really goddamn good. This is so good. So a little rich, mm-hmm. maybe. Um, well, that's the great thing about <clears throat> things like this is like you can have one and be like, and I'm satisfied. Exactly. Versus like, I could eat that entire plate of Rice Krispie Treats. I love marshmallow. Marshmallow and caramel are my downfalls. Ooh, and noted. Mm-hmm. Mm, coming for you. So I almost made homemade marshmallows. That's see, mm-hmm. like I just don't have that in me. Like I was so happy with how easy these brownie balls were mm-hmm. because I, you know, like everyone else this time of year, am too fucking busy. I'm too fucking stressed. I'm too fucking tired to be doing crazy things in the kitchen. Again, I am not. I'm just crazy. That so person. <laughs> and, and hats off to everyone out there who <clears throat> has kids and jobs and deadlines and presents to buy and all kinds of nonsense. And you're still like, I'm going to go right into the kitchen and do some crazy fucking things. Like major hats off to you, dear. We'll get to those meringues. Actually, we'll just go ahead and talk about those meringues. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's beanie. Beanie? I can taste the chickpeas. into a block of styrofoam. <laughs> it tastes like um like a lemon chickpea. <laughs> it's terrible because there is no citrus whatsoever. That's what it tastes like. In this recipe. Okay. I didn't, I didn't eat it all. This but. this was the daring aspect of my culinary nonsense. <clears throat> now, are you, are, are you going to eat those? Oh, yeah. Because you know there's, um, but marshmallows aren't vegan. They are not vegan. Mm -mm. Um, They are not. Mm -mm. But you can't have an egg Mm -mm. white for the. Well, (laughs) 
<laughs> you know, while I do for go for mind. ease and simplicity in the kitchen, um, I also, I'm like, I have to have that vegan thing as mm-hmm. the oh, resident sure, sure, sure. vegan yeah, vegetarian, so right? We're going to get you so, a crown. Thank you, mm-hmm, Sash. Sash. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Um, so, <laughs> made out of aquafaba. <laughs> so here's a fun lesson in veganism for you. Um, we, uh, by we, I mean they, because this was the first time I've ever done this. Vegans have um, aquafaba, which you can get, for those of you who don't know, it's the water inside a can of chickpeas that's aquafaba evidently if you pour that out and you beat it with a hand mixer for Mm -hmm. 15 fucking minutes it becomes a meringue interesting yeah um that we'll start there Mm -hmm. i love chickpeas i put them on everything i i also adore a chickpea i love a hummus yes i Mm -hmm. have made my own hummus love Love that shit right Mm -hmm. and um since the dawn of my veganism i had read about the things that you could do with um the aquafaba or the chickpea water again i've just never been like daring or motivated enough to do anything about it this weekend rolls around and i'm like i have to do something this was the something Mm-hmm. Um, so the recipe that I had read called for two cans of chickpea water. I strongly suggest you use only one can of chickpea water because the bowl that I was mixing this in, how many gallons is that bowl, Michael? Like it had to have been like a three gallon bowl, right? Which color was it? The blue one, the huge blue one. That's a massive bowl. And after literally 15 fucking minutes of beating this chickpea water, it fluffed up to this. I had three gallons of chickpea meringue. Wow. And a very, very limp arm because just. That's what she said. Yes. (laughs) It just (laughs) wouldn't quit. It wouldn't quit. Wow. Um. Well, they're very pretty. They are, right? Mm-hmm. Honestly, very shocked by mm-hmm. how very, they like, turned out. They're pretty and shiny, like like a meringue is supposed to look. Oh, let's oh. – yep, in front of the camera. So um, – They're very pretty. I beat these to within an inch of my life. Got it. And the recipe called for, like, um, vanilla extract, well, powdered cream sugar, of tartar it, right? cream of tartar. The tartar is what's bringing that citrus. N- oh, interesting. You know, cream of tartar adds that kind of, like, citric acid kind of taste, huh. which is when when you put it in, a, like, a, in a meringue, like a lemon meringue pie or something, it, that it adds that. So that's what I'm tasting is the cream of tartar. Interesting. Okay, mm-hmm. so go light on the cream of tartar because I don't measure things. I was just like, boom. Oh, goodness. Yep. Yep. <laughs> The surprise. <laughs> as, as bakers around the world are like, um. and we lost <clears throat> all of our subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I'm like, I want to make this festive. Um, let me throw in some crushed up peppermints, and I threw in some peppermint extract. Okay. Um, I don't know if you got any of that. Mm-mm. Weird, because it was like overwhelmingly pepperminty i think as they were baking which they well bake very low very slow extracts you have to put in so much if you want any of that flavor because extract is mostly alcohol and it bakes off and it bakes off oh uh, my understanding was like the opposite where you want to go light on the mm-hmm. extract so if you want a very very strong particular flavor then you use that oil so if you wanted a lot of peppermint flavor then you'd put peppermint oil in it but a peppermint extract is mostly alcohol, and that's going to just cook off when you're baking it. <laughs> just commit to the crunch. <laughs> well, we saw a video they sent you mm-hmm. yesterday, right? Yeah. It was just like... So, do you see what I mean? With kind of like a citrusy? Yeah, I, for the life of me, cannot figure out, like... That's from the cream of tartar. Okay, fun fact, that was also my first time ever using cream of tartar as mm-hmm. well, so... Yeah, main ingredient in the uh, meringue. So I would say from start to finish, Mm -hmm. this took me over three hours to do, and that's be and that's not even using all of the aquafaba meringue. 
because if I had used all of the aquafaba meringue, it would have made like 3,000 of these tiny little meringues. Wow. So I used maybe, maybe like the top quarter of well, this bowl. So cool. You could use these and probably like adjust the recipe a little bit. We could make macaroons. And oh, like, true. Yeah. You know, and then like, you know, and have fillings on the inside and have like vegan macaroons. <clears throat> In the meantime, if you are shipping any um, fragile products to your friends and family this holiday, these meringues uh, will make a perfect substitute and um, For packing earth peanuts? friendly packing peanut. Oh they are biodegradable. They don't. You know what it is? Is I was expecting the flavor of a meringue, like an actual meringue. I don't know. And it's know. just a little bit different. And so that's why I was like, oh, that's that's a shock. So it's not like I don't I don't hate it, but it's that's kind of the weird thing about mm-hmm. him is like these are not <laughs> like awful. Mm, I got peppermint on that one. Okay, good. Because also peppermint extract. You know, kind of like, unless you mix it in really well. I mean, I spent like an hour. Interesting. Total. And you can smell the peppermint in it, but does not taste it as much. Okay. So you're telling, okay, so. Extract has alcohol that bakes away. Hmm. Oil. If you want more of a flavor, you put whatever, like, like, there's orange oil in this little shenanigan over here to I get more of an orange flavor was out of coconut oil melting uh-huh. down these dark chocolate chips so i used almond oil and uh-huh. you can totally you can pick almond, that up yeah, when you get it's oil in good it. and like uh-huh. it works but i'm like wow i didn't realize that was such a dense flavor uh-huh. yeah because mm-hmm. the oil will stick around and you'll get that flavor in it <laughs> but extract is mostly alcohol okay so and that's another fun fact this is good. For those of you who <laughs> want to try the aquafaba meringue, measure your cream of tartar I for have, the I, love of God. I have never or ever heard that. Actually, I, I want to try it <clears throat> just, just, to, just to see what happens. Do it correctly. Maybe I'll make a pie. Ooh. And add, like, maybe some different oils or something to it and, like, you know, ooh, you know it would be good? And, like, have, like, a meringue on top of, like, a chess pie. What's a chess pie? Chess pie is a really, really dense chocolate pie. Okay. It's kind of like um, the same consistency of a pecan pie minus the pecans. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Mm, Well, that sounds good. You know, I think this is a very good base to know and use for those who want to do a little bit more vegan, Mm -hmm. integrated kind of baking. Um, Honestly, I would say... um, Five out of ten, super labor intensive um, uh-huh. for, like, a very strange product overall. But I think this is definitely good to know, to have kind of in in your back pocket no, no, for no, super, when you're cooking vegan super, in the super kitchen. Super, super cool. Totally. Vegan stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. this is the clear winner. This little action. Oh, yeah. That shit's delicious. Right here. Oh, yeah, little brownie balls. These are good. I wish that you could heat. I I, Mm -hmm. I know. It's butter and, you know, and cream, so you can't have it. But I'm glad that you like the cranberry things. There's your chess pie. It looks like a chocolate pie. Chess pie is so good. It's not like a chocolate, though. It's like um, as chocolate is like it's more like um, a chocolate pie would be more like a pudding, almost kind of like a lighter base. And a chess pie is very dense. Okay. And like chewier. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Delish. So this would definitely cut through oh, that totally. kind of like to have like density a on top of a chest. Mm-hmm. Love, so, love, love a chest pie. When I talked to you the other night, you were working mm-hmm. on these candies with mm-hmm. one of your kids. Yeah. Would you like? Is this a fun like mother child well, kind of activity? You know, so <clears throat> my middle kid, my fifteen year old is very very interested in cooking like considering the culinary arts as a career oh wow so this like we do more challenging things like this kid took a class this past summer on knife skills with a chef 
at a restaurant. Wow. Just so that he could learn more and asked for a set of knives for Christmas this year. He didn't get it because they're really expensive. But um, like he he's wavering between being a chef and um, or or being an athletic um, like he he wants to like be be kind of like a personal trainer like for like a sports team. Okay, being like an athletic trainer. Wow, these are his two career choices that he's wavering between. But he loves being in the kitchen, <clears throat> and I try to find challenging things for him to do. You know, so we'll talk about the reasons why, like the science behind things. Like, why do you mix your sugar and butter first Mm -hmm. before you add your dry ingredients and stuff? And we talk about... First of all, why do you? So you have to cream your ingredients first, or what will happen is then your, like the flour and all that other stuff will get kind of clumpy and not incorporate correctly, and you'll add too much air into things, and your stuff will be chewy. Interesting. Like cakes and, and that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's why you want to do that. Because I also... So if you, you can't just like, with baking, just like throw everything into one pot and just like turn on the mixer and stuff. It's going to turn Ugh, out weird. What the fuck, man? I know. Sorry. Which is why I loved these hard candies because that was literally what I was you like. You could throw everything, throw everything in, in a pot. pot and, turn yes. on, and I'm like, oh my goodness, it's crazy. Where like baking is such a multi-step. It's science. I had also pre-made some vegan gingerbread dough mm. because not anywhere. What in were your what were your substitutes? The for? whole wide world is there like pre-made gingerbread dough or mm-hmm. even like the dry mix. I'm like, guys, it's Christmas. Mm-hmm. Where's the gingerbread shit? And it was nowhere to be found. So if we wanted to decorate, not hard to, to make it really wasn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's it's just all in the spices, mm-hmm. which mm, I love those spices anyway. Yeah. Makes me want a chai tea latte. So I'm not sure even what the substitute I mean, you're just substituting the was. eggs, really. Yeah, that's it. Because yeah. um, there's no, I mean, in the gingerbread that I make, there's no cream. Yeah. <clears throat> I think I put in just like a splash of almond milk because mm-hmm. it was like very was dry. It, too dry. it was super crumbly. It was not doing what it needed to do to be sure, a sure. dough. Um but no, it was just vegan butter, brown sugar, vanilla extract, and molasses was all that went into the wet mm-hmm. ingredients. So and I was curious as to why I and weirdly I was thinking that. I'm like whisking these wet ingredients together going why do i have to do this separately this what a colossal extra pain in my ass step Mm -hmm. and it's for those reasons to make sure that all the ingredients get incorporated and because of when you mix something too much it makes the flour and it makes that it separates the gluten too much and it Mm. makes it tough so then you get like a tough cake or a tough cookie or any of those kind of things and so you want to do it so that you don't have to mix the flour that much mm-hmm. so that you're just incorporating it into the wet ingredient mm-hmm. and then then you don't have a tough cake or, and then you get that light air then it, you like then the air and the little air pockets that are in there get to kind of puff up okay Which, i know the science behind yeast and all these things like i know how they work but why for the life of me i'm terrible at yeast bad i'm gonna work on it I'm working on it. We'll, we'll do a future show. Maybe where I can, like, all of a sudden, like, be, like, good at Amazing yeast. at it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I am also not sure, like, <coughs> I guess what the trouble is because I've used, like, instant yeast mm-hmm. and, like, rolled out some, I think, um, cinnamon rolls. Mm-hmm. I've done that. And, like, just various other things. It's just whenever I, cu- I come across a recipe and I'm like, ooh, that looks good. And then it's like... One packet of yeast. And I'm like, okay, now this is too much work. Well, you know, it is because yeast is a living thing. And it's so easy to kill it. And I've either me killed it, like, be- by adding too much hot water or by not feeding it enough. And so I'm either not feeding enough or I'm feeding it too much. Or you just have to find that middle ground. Hmm. It sounds like a very... It's, it's very... Healthy. It sounds like a child. Yeah, because my mom doesn't like to bake. And she has... Definitely hinted, Anna Briggs, if you're listening. I hear you. <laughs> Her mother was like the best. 
baker. We are still using her sugar cookie recipe mm. for cutouts. This is like I um, this cranberry red bread thing is something very similar to what my grandmother made. And my grandmother made these clover leaf rolls. It's like three little balls of dough in a muffin tin, and then they puff up, and it looks like a popover with like three little things. And my mom hasn't been able to figure them out, and I haven't been able to figure them out. And my grandmother was that kind of baker that she just made them, and she didn't have a recipe written down. Way to go, Grandma. Thanks a lot, Sylvia. So I... (laughs) So I, it has become like one of my quests to figure out these crescent rolls for my mom. So on our next Uh episode, we get a medium in here to interrogate Sylvia. Totally. Sylvia is wonderful, but evidently she was just one of those cooks that was just like, it's fine. You just like, you know, put this, this, and this, and this together. Not, you know, she was so intuitive Yes. When it came to cooking and baking, that it didn't occur to her that, like, other people might need some more instruction and maybe a little guidance <laughs> of how to do X, Y, and Z. And it, she just, like, made things. I so. get that. And mm-hmm. I feel it. I'm deep in my core because that is who I am in the kitchen. Mostly, like, savory items. Um, but... Yeah, when well, I mean, people ask me for recipes, well, I'm like, nice thing you just about... use this and this and this and throw it in a pot. Yeah, and it's they're the like, nice thing about cooking because thanks. mistakes can be corrected with cooking. Oh, if yeah. Something is like, if you taste it and you're like, oh, it needs a little X, Y, or Z with baking. Mm-mm. In the trash. It's, yeah, it's, you have to follow the exact thing and it has to be exact or it's garbage. So I have some fun facts about Christmas goodies. Oh boy. That I know that you would love to know. This sounds scary. The Renaissance broads. Uh Uh-huh. So, do you know when candy started? When? You can take a little guess. Yes. Is this like BCE? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, all right. Well, you know, when was Jesus born? So it had mm-hmm. to have been at least um, the night Jesus was born. Yeah, so the Egyptians invented candy 5,000 years ago. Amazing. Amazing. I know. So they would take nuts and different spices and figs and roll them in honey and then let them sit for a little while until they got oh, hard or chewy. That and, sounds so good. And that was candy. So you'd have, I know, a fig rolled I in love the honey. Figs. Maybe like a little like pistachio or something on the outside of it I mean, wouldn't that be wonderful like yeah i'd eat that now so mm. egyptians started candy and then the tradition of christmas candy and all of the goodies that we still do today started in 1670 by a choir master in germany who had his obnoxious choir boys that couldn't stop yapping during the probably three hour masses that they would have for the holidays. So he started making them these sugar sticks and then turning them like candy canes to keep them quiet during the masses. And then that caught on all over Europe, where then it became, if you went to church, they would just automatically give you a little sugar stick. So your kid kid would would shut the fuck up. Exactly, during these long church services for the holidays. And it wasn't until 1847 that they started to, like, actually think about them and, like, oh, maybe these are, like, kind of, like, it looks like a staff, like a shepherd's staff, like Christmas time. Uh And then they started putting peppermint flavor on them. But that wasn't until the 1920s that they, so they were just plain, it was just sugar. It was just, it was just sweet, like a sweet cane. Then in the 1920s, they added peppermint and they added the stripes, but they were handmade until 1957. Something in my whole like gut and soul just knew these hard candies originated in Germany. Yep. I don't know why. It just made sense. So they were super, super labor intensive. Yes. And they finally, in 1957, they figured out some machine that could make candies like by machine and so then it just like took off and then people started gifting them 
and they became like decorations on trees and ribbon candy was a thing and and then it was all of these flavors that were hard to come by mm-hmm. in the 17 and 1800s like orange and peppermint and chocolate Ooh. and so those became synonymous with christmas because they were hard to get so then they became worthy of a gift for someone so you'd give someone an orange for Christmas because it was like next to impossible to get an orange <laughs> and so that like the, putting an orange in someone's stocking or orange cover or orange candies or chocolate covered oranges or any of those things were like the ultimate gift mm-hmm. like if you got an orange from someone that was like oh that was that's so Super cute and but like oranges <clears throat> are so gross man like <gasps> You don't like oranges? No, I don't. You, this is the funniest thing. So sorry. I'm going to tell this quick story, and then I'll let you tell us what you found, Michael. Today at work, my <laughs> coworker comes out of the back room. He's like, are those your oranges in the fridge? And I was like, fuck no. And he just <laughs> dies laughing. He's like, what have you got against oranges? And I'm I like, love oranges. they're gross. <laughs> do you like? Do you hate all citrus, or is it just oranges? I'm not a fruit person. Really? Imagine being like 99% vegan and being like, I goddamn hate fruit. You don't That's like me. Fruit, so, like anything. I like berries. I like berries. I like okay. blackberries and raspberries. Apples? No. You don't like apples? Not unless it's like with peanut butter. Interesting. This is so funny because so my like coworker did the same fruit, thing. Not a lemon. Oh, God. Grapefruits are just like awful. Grapefruits are wonderful. They just taste like sour. And like, so like any like kind of exotic things like, like a melon. I love melon. Okay. I love like cantaloupe. Melons and berries. You just don't like citrus and apples. Pears? No, they're too sweet. It's like biting into a sugar ball. Weird. Huh. I like, I actually hate like most fruit. And he starts peeling a banana like, are bananas gross? Like he's, I think he like hates me now. I, I, I don't like bananas. I don't know, but is no, a banana a fruit? I, it, well, it's I a guess ba- technically. It's a, it's a berry. You know, avocados are berries too. Mm-hmm. Wild. Yeah. What did you have, Michael? Well, no, I was just going to touch <laughs> on what Carolyn was saying about when uh, the first candy was made. Because you know you're going to have listeners out there that are going to hear this and go, she's full of shit. This isn't it. But um, according to Wikipedia, mm-hmm. all right, uh, around 6,000 B.C., an ancient artist in Spain drew a picture on a cave wall of a man scoping honey from a beehive. So as early as 6,000 B.C., they were climbing trees to get uh, honey from the bees. Now, in 2000 B.C., that was when honey cakes were made by the slaves in Egypt. So that was before anything came so, west. Egyptian candy. Egyptian candy, yeah. Like yeah. Wow. So for ancient Spain, they were like still in bee honey. Mm-hmm. So my thought, okay, this was a meme that has been kind of circulating around the internet, and it asks a very good question: where who was the first person to look at a beehive and go, "There's something delicious hiding in there, and I'm going to find out what it is." Well, probably what happened is, wouldn't you think that maybe something was dripping from it? Possibly. You know, and they, like, got wind of that and were like, well, this is good. That would be. Mm -hmm. But then you go up the tree and these assholes start fucking stinging you. I feel like at some point you've got to be like, this just isn't worth it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I, I like honey. I think honey is so good for you. It's got amazing like antibiotic properties it mm-hmm. does wonders for those who suffer seasonal allergies it's just so important that you source your honey locally because those are the pollens that you need ingesting in order to build that immunity mm-hmm. and that's my psa for the week yay also buy locally because you know these bees are being cared for being the like 99 percent vegan that i am like i will eat honey but i'm like very very selective about the farms from whom i purchase this honey we're not just getting the plastic bear bottle from food lion and like yeah that's honey i don't think that's actually honey there's a beehive in front of the duke energy center at the end of fayetteville oh okay Mm -hmm. does someone go out there and Mm -hmm. there is a tender of those bees okay and a beekeeper, I don't know if they're producing 
exactly what's happening, but they're using them as like just to like help pollinate the area. Yeah, that's so important. Mm -hmm. Save our honeybees, you know, and that's probably the other thing why to also like partake in the consumption of honey because like we just have to do more to care for our pollinators because without them, literally, we would all die. Um, and that's a bad day. Mm -hmm. That's a bad day. That was another fun fact. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> um, what are we doing next? So we're going to be talking about wine. <laughs> yes. Right? How we make wine. How um, women are starting to be more important in the wine industry. Okay. Wine has been a male-dominated field for a very, very long time. Which, um, yeah, I mean, for for a long time, like the first winemakers were monks. Oh. And then women did like kind of like in villages and stuff, I think, make a lot of wine. But now even still, like a lot of the the big vintners, I think, when you think of winemakers around the world, you're thinking of like your Robert Mondavis and like all that kind of stuff. That... Which is like a whole lot of suck. Sorry, mm -hmm. Robert. No, no, I, I, I feel like... you. So we have, you know, found some <clears throat> wine people that are a little bit more pro, pro girl. Mm -hmm. and... Well, let's be real. We're single handedly funding the entire industry mm -hmm. here. I, I think I I would be remiss to find out men spent more purchasing wine than women do. Oh, for sure. I think I think for sure too. Like within that kind of like middle range market. Mm hmm. You know, kind of like that middle to low end bottle. There's probably a lot more women than men. For sure. Mm hmm. So it's only right that we start making it too. Yeah, for sure. And I think what we well. <clears throat> Before we start talking about next week, what did we, what what did we learn? Um, yes to the brownie balls. <laughs> um, soft no on the meringues. Hard yes on the hard candy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, and then um, do not follow whatever recipe that was. No, really, really, really don't. So pectin and sugar make a make a tumor. Lauren, did you even talk about your Rice Krispie treats? Well, um, you know, and I had asked this question earlier with the intention of kind of segueing into, like, things you can do in the kitchen with your kids, make memories, uh -huh. right? Um, so while I was at the grocery store acquiring um, set ingredients for these delicious things, um, Michael's daughter, Michaela, said, I want to make Rice Krispie treats. I said, great, that is totally something we can do together and uh, let me feature it on the podcast coming up. She's like, yeah. So it was um, it was a great kind of collaborative effort. You know, she's she's full grown. She's 17, right? So she totally knows how to operate in the kitchen. But it was very cool to kind of be alongside her and, like, give her some, like, pointers and some alternatives to things that maybe um, she wouldn't have otherwise thought, you know, while she was collecting the um, marshmallow cereal wads she's like oh it's stuck to my hands so i'm like oh wash your hands and spray your hands with cooking oil so it doesn't get stuck to your hands and it was just like oh what a special tender moment together <laughs> um it was a tender moment okay she made a penis she did make a penis she Fantastic. made a marshmallow penis as every kid should. she made rice a rice a rice crispy a rice, a rice <laughs> why am i struggling with this a because it crispiness. Was a crisp. A crispiness. With some whipped topping on the tip of it. She did. She took oh. a bit of melted marshmallow and like dropped it on the tip. I'm like, your father's wow. gonna drop kick you <laughs> right out the fucking kitchen. <laughs> and amazing. she's dying laughing. She FaceTimes her mom and is like, Look what I made. And I'm like, I what I can't do anything about this. These are the moments. Mm -hmm. So it was it was <laughs> special until she made a rice crispy penis sure i get it but it was funny so mm -hmm. i guess um i i had intended to kind of touch on like these are i would say overall very easy things not very dangerous things that you can totally incorporate with um 
your offspring um, in the kitchen as well. Make those memories. It's that season. You know, you want to provide all these great yummy things, but it's about the doing and the being together as a family unit. Um, and your kid, your 15 year old, you talked about like he loves doing this anyway. Mm-hmm. And I just think that's so special and so poignant that you guys can have this together in the kitchen. Totally. What about your other two? Are they just like, thanks and eat it and buy? Yeah, <clears throat> pretty much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. The other, the little one will help me. Like we'll be making cutouts this week. I can't make them too early or they eat them all. And then we have nothing for Christmas. So I won't make those until Thursday. Okay. You know, and then, and but he'll help me frost them and decorate them and stuff. Mm. But no, the big one. No, he's just he's, like, I'm eating this. He'll eat it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, he'll eat it. Then he'll eat all of them. But. <laughs> How old is he? 18. Okay. He'll be 19 in a month. Oh, my goodness. Mm-hmm. Mm. Jackass. Yeah. That's okay. Mm-hmm. They're, you know, they mm-hmm. all are, I guess, at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess that's, um, that was the only thing I wanted to touch on. So next um, episode. Yeah, wine. We are going to be talking about some wine. Yeah, so how we make wine, how we taste wine, how we use wine, maybe even how we can pick wine. So if you just want to be a little bit more educated and sophisticated in what you pick to entertain your friends, mm-hmm. um, definitely tune in to the next episode yeah. of Renaissance Prize. It can be like how to be bougie and also two buck chuck is okay. I think. What is that? The the two the well it's now three buck chuck, but the three dollar wine at Trader Joe's, the Charles Shaw. Oh, it's three dollars a bottle. Let me tell you though, I went into <laughs> Aldi for the first time um, just a few months oh, ago when I first moved the to the Midtown out. area. So good. Mm-hmm. I'm just like finally for the first time in my life the I can like Al fill Shiraz is a delight. My wine cabinet, which I've mm-hmm. never done because I drink it too goddamn fast. So, I bought four or five bottles cuz I'm like if it sucks, whatever. I'm just using it to for like aesthetics. It's just filling up the wine bar. But after one particularly bad day at work i'm like i'm fucking drinking this and it was good it's good now winging owl is really good well that's the same company aldi and trader oh, joe's nice who knew owned by the same people you knew I, now, knew. I am full of random random crap and yeah. that's why we love you here cheers cheers mm-hmm. all righty kids that's it for this episode of renaissance broads carolyn okay. thank you so much and thank you Laura. for all of this mm-hmm. deliciousness We will see you next time. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Thanks for joining us. Bye.